Hello everyone! As you can see I have the Ryzen build out and about again and its side is off and that's because we are going to be installing the RX 580 in here today. The Power Color Red Devil Golden Sample 580. Now you might be able to see here that I've already installed the Noctua fans in the system. We have the 120mm fan in the back and the two 140mm fans in the front, somewhere around there. I didn't record installing those and I also installed the SSD and a hard drive in here, a larger hard drive. I figured that those wouldn't be all that interesting and that I really just wanted to get the RX 580 review done, so that's what we're going to do today. Right now I have a 7970GHz edition installed. This is a Gigabyte Windforce card and it's pretty obnoxious when it's running at full power. It's developed some pretty terrible coil wine over the years and it's kind of just running out of life. And this card I bought as a clearance item, so it's never been quite 100%. It's never been a full 7970. It's always had some odd issues and artifacting that happens occasionally. So I'm really looking forward to upgrading to the 580. And here it is, the RX 580 Red Devil Golden Sample from Power Color. If you've watched the unboxing video where I unboxed this, my last mail goodies video, then you already knew about this. If you didn't, then... This is the card I got during the Black Friday sale. Also on this card I do like the color scheme on it. The red and black scheme fits with everything else in the system. Finally be able to get rid of this obnoxious blue PCB graphics card. So let's install this card here and get everything up and running. I've already done benchmarks with the 7970. We're going to be testing Battlefield 5, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, 3D Mark, Time Spy, and Fire Strike, of course. We're also going to do Ashes of the Singularity. They have a nice benchmark built in there. Anyway, let's install this. Okay, so the Gigabyte card is out of the system, and the Red Devil card is installed. So now we've got to do a bunch of benchmarking and then I can come back and tell you guys what the results are. First we'll look at 3D Mark performance. 3D Mark is a synthetic benchmark so for these tests I only ran them three times each and then averaged the score. In Fire Strike Extreme at 1080p the 580 beats the 7970 by 5413 points or roughly 79%. At 1440p, the 580 beats the 7970 by 2,753 points, or roughly 68%. In Time Spy Extreme at 1080p, the 580 scores 2,515 points higher than the 7970, or roughly 87%. At 1440p, it beats the 7970 by 1,478 points, or 72%. The second benchmark we are going to look at today is Ashes of the Singularity. I also consider this to be a mostly synthetic benchmark just because of the way it's designed, so I only recorded this one three times per GPU as well. For Ashes of the Singularity I used OCAT to capture the first 120 seconds of the 180 second long benchmark period. I then converted the OCAT output to FPS and averaged the three runs for each card. The Ashes of the Singularity benchmark data here kind of speaks fairly loudly all by itself. The 7970 averaged a third of the rate of the 580. It's fairly clear from this that the old architecture just wasn't suited well to these newer APIs. The RX 580 averaged 76 frames per second in both the DirectX 12 and Vulkan runs with 1% lows of 43 and 42 and 0.1% lows of 37 and 40 respectively. It's also interesting to note that when using Vulkan, the 0.1% lows did increase slightly for the RX 580. For the next benchmark, we are going to look at Battlefield 5. In Battlefield 5, I tested at both 1080p and 1440p with the Ultra preset selected. For this benchmark, I chose the second checkpoint of the third single-player campaign because this area of the game is densely populated by forest and brush and then transitions into a military outpost. I like this area because it was very easy to reproduce the same path through the area so that the OCAT testing was slightly less variable. 
I was actually happily surprised by the performance of the 7970 in Battlefield 5. It does seem that DICE managed to optimize the game pretty well for even a six-year-old card like this. However, the 7970 still didn't manage to pull off 60 frames per second at 1080p, managing only 47 frames per second on average. It still should be fairly easy to get it hitting 60 frames per second just by tweaking some of the graphics settings down. At 1440p it suffered quite badly, however, and it definitely wasn't the most pleasant of experiences, especially in a fast-paced shooter like Battlefield 5. The RX 580 at 1080p was very smooth. I would think that with a FreeSync display this would be a perfect game for the RX 580. Even without a variable refresh rate monitor, the RX 580 produced a very smooth game experience and it was quite enjoyable. With some minor tweaks, the RX 580 could also easily hit 60 frames per second at 1440p. The RX 580 ran close enough to 60 FPS that the experience at 1440 was actually slightly smoother and had less stuttering and tearing than the 1080p run, just because it was hovering closer to the 60Hz rate of my monitor. Next up we're going to compare the cards in Deus Ex Mankind Divided at the Ultra Preset. First we are going to look at the built-in benchmark in DirectX 11 mode. For the 7970 the stuttering was quite obnoxious and would make the game a very unplayable situation. I think with some setting tweaks you could likely make a higher more playable frame rate but it's obvious that this beastly game engine shows that a 6 year old card is going to have a hard time with it. At 1080p it sat below 30 frames per second, and at 1440p it couldn't even manage to hit 20 frames per second. The RX 580 managed to do a lot better with the average at 1080p being 42 frames per second, with 33 frames per second for the 1% lows and 29 frames per second for the 0.1% lows. I consider this to be just within the realm of playable frame rates as anything lower than 30 quickly feels like a stuttering mess. But with just over 30, kind of pushing into that 40 range, it was actually okay. At 1440p it had a much harder time, though it still managed to average over 30 frames per second. We did get a big drop in the 1% and 0.1% lows, with the 0.1% lows really suffering and dropping down to 18 FPS, which led to very obvious stuttering. In DirectX 12 mode, the 580 actually performed slightly better, with 45 frames per second average and both 1% and 0.1% lows over 30 FPS at 1080p. This produces a pretty playable experience, though it isn't as nice and smooth as 60 FPS would be. In 1440p, the 1% and 0.1% lows also managed to be more consistent in DirectX 12 mode and held steady at 20 FPS, which is a minor uplift over the DirectX 11 values. All in all, I'd say the RX 580 performs pretty admirably, and with the current sale prices on the card, it is a beastly upgrade if you're coming from a much older GPU like I was. So I decided with this set of benchmarks, I also wanted to show some of the frame time data that I captured with OCAT. So I decided to compile some of it into some charts. We have a chart for Battlefield 5 at 1080p and Deus Ex at 1080p. In a frame time chart, we represent the data as the time that a frame is displayed on the screen before the next frame is displayed. With frame time data, the lower the time that a frame is on the screen, the better. However, you also need to pay attention to the consistency. Stuttering is generally a byproduct of inconsistent frame times, and it usually happens when the time between frames fluctuates wildly. So ideally, we want very consistent low frame times. For Battlefield 5, the frame times at 1080p hover below the 15 millisecond mark for the majority of the benchmarking session. However, it does see spikes up into the high teens or low 20s. These aren't super obvious while playing because for the most part, the frames rarely dip below the 16.66 millisecond 60 frame per second mark, but when they do jump up into the low 20s or very high teens, you do experience some micro stuttering which can be very annoying in a fast paced game. It's certainly a bearable experience however, and for the majority of the time it is producing very smooth gameplay. In addition, I imagine it would be pretty simple to tweak some of the settings and reduce the quality slightly just to help resolve most of the stuttering issues. 
The Deus Ex frame time chart is actually quite a bit more interesting. You can see that despite being below 60 FPS, it actually has a pretty consistent frame time at 1080p. It maintains this consistency in both DirectX 12 and DirectX 11. Even though there are a few spots with very obvious stuttering, I think with some settings tweaks it would be fairly easy to find a nice balance between visual quality and stutter-free gameplay. This is mostly in part to how consistent the frame times are in this particular title. It is important, however, to note that this is during the benchmark that all of this is recorded, not actual gameplay. So it's likely that there will be some variance once you add in more factors and uncertainty to the game. I had planned on including some GTA 5 benchmarks in addition to the other ones that I have here, however I couldn't get it to cooperate right now with OCAT. So no matter what I did, I just couldn't get OCAT to hook GTA 5, so I had to leave that benchmark out of here because I couldn't get it to capture the frame time data. When I have some more time in the future, I do want to do some more game benchmarks. There's a bunch of other games that I want to get benchmarked with the new graphics card as well. I also want to do some overclock testing on it. From a little brief play around with the overclocking settings and switching it to the OC BIOS instead of the silent one, I was able to get it to run through some of the benchmarks at 1500 MHz on the core and 2250 MHz on the memory. I haven't actually done a stress test or anything on it to see if that's stable or not, or if it's <laughs> pushing it a little bit too hard. And I also need to get the cable extension so that I can run two separate cables to the power of the GPU. Right now the GPU is just using a daisy chain PCI power connector, and that's not ideal if we're going to be trying to overclock on it. It will be much better if I can get two separate cables running to it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video or found it informative if you were looking at the Red Devil 580 Golden Sample. If you liked this video, then be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you know anybody that might be interested in the information here or anything, then be sure to share it with them. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below, or you can email them to me or you can tweet them to me. If you haven't already, then consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the little bell icon to get notified when I post new videos. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.